today we have Sea of Gold. Sea of Gold is a auto-pathing MMO RPG. It is a pirate-themed story where you fight different fleets of ships. The combat is turn-based on a grid-style map. You collect different captains to control your ships to build the strongest fleet. The naval feel of this game kind of breathes in life back into the, the typical autopath style of an MMO. The downside is that a lot of these mechanics that you have from regular autopathing games got carried over into this. So even though you have this different feel and style of a uh, game, you got a lot of the same mechanics and it shows up a lot. One thing you'll notice is whenever you're rendering a new area of the map, it becomes in very pixelated most of the time. This game tends to have very slow loading times. When they did the feel and aesthetic of the game, they really nailed it. And and they did it in an interesting way, because they didn't go straight Pirate of the Caribbean style of this, where they added in kind of that lore and folklore to of pirates into this. So you got different sea creatures and different types of mythological creatures that'll come and attack you and it feels like a very pirate fantasy game and that helps that helps bring you more into this game it's not something this regular stereotypical pirates shooting different ships and it adds a, a different type of character in there that helps break up the monotony and I gotta say I'm a little partial to this because I've always liked games where you get to go and make a big massive fleet and terrorize everyone and take over and just make this big naval battle and just conquer through your different ways that you set up your strategy. So the combat in this game you have a grid that you compete on and on this grid there are different obstacles that set up different types of choke points on the map. And it allows you to direct your ships, well, direct your ship, your flagship, to where you want it to go. And then you can set out different sh ships from your fleet from there. And it adds a lot of strategy to this game. It makes it a lot of fun. But they limit it with the computer controlled characters because. You only control your flagship, and the rest of the ships are controlled by the computer. You can see the this is the auto-pathing feature, where you just click on the mission and it'll take you there. But another thing you get to do is you get to teleport instantaneously to wherever you want. So if you don't want to be sailing around, then you can go ahead and teleport wherever you want. They have a really nice feature where you hover over your enemy and you get to see all their stats. But the thing is that you're on a clock with each turn that you have. So at the beginning of the match you have to figure out which way you're going to be going and who you're going to want to be taking on first. Now different ships get different movement ranges and amount of attacks and movements that they get to do in each turn. So when you set up your choke points and your flanks is kind of important to understand which ones you want to go after first. The game lets you choose a bunch of different ships and different captains. And the captains let you do different types of special moves like a mortar shot or a fire shot. And the ships do different types of movements and actions. Like the one I'm using now can move a fairly far distance and attack twice. And with all the different ships and different captains that you have at your disposal, you can build a fleet that does a wide variety of different types of attacks. So it allows you to build uh, it allows you to build very diverse groups in your fleets. The one part where this falls short at is 
that it doesn't allow you to control any of your fleet except for your flagship. So you're pretty much reliant on the computer to do what's right and not make a bad decision in combat. In the case of the combat, some of these mechanics seem glitchy. When in combat, your cursor can disappear and not return. Other times, the game completely locks up. This happens very rarely, so it's not a game breaker. This game supports PvP, but the one downside to the PvP in this game is that the small amount of control that you had when you're in PvE, when you get to control your flagship, is taken away from you here. And you get to watch your ships battle it out against each other with no control of your own. It's all simmed out, and you can completely skip the battle scene if you want to, because it's all predetermined. Which is quite a, which is something I did not like at all because some the best part of the game was the strategy aspect of this of being able to go around the grid and set up different maneuvers and basically outmove your opponent using the map against them and when you go into the PvP that entire aspect's taken away and I feel like limiting the player control in this game was a bad idea to start off with but limiting it when you do battle against other humans, well, that's not really a smart choice at all. I've always been interested in the games where you get to build your massive fleets and go around and terrorize the locals and loot everyone you come across, but I just don't like how it didn't let me control my entire fleet. That's just one thing, one nagging thing I have against this game is if you are able to create such a large fleet up to 10 ships, why don't you get to choose how they move and how you're going to control them all? It would add such a large layer of strategy to this game and make it that much more interesting to the player. even with the story and the aesthetic that this game's got going on, that I'm just playing another autopather and that I'm not really gaining anything from this, like anything new. This game is trying to put a fresh spin on a well-explored game type. In some ways, it achieved that, but there are some improvements that could be done. If you're looking for a new autopather, this game might be worth checking out. Otherwise, I'd say this is a pass.